Hey everybody, it's Ward, it's a chick here, and today I am going to be reacting to Carl Pilkington and Idiot Abroad, <clears throat> Season 2, Episode 5, Meet a Gorilla. <laughs> I apologize ahead of time, I'm having really bad um, allergies, and um, well, I hope you guys are enjoying my content. If you do, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and grab your favorite drink, maybe a spliff, and let's get to it. Look at this one. Come face to face with mountain gorillas in their natural habitat. <clears throat> what a privilege that is. One of the most endangered species on the planet. One of our closest living relatives. 98% genetically identical to a human, a gorilla. Even more similar to you. What an amazing <laughs> privilege that is. I'd like to see one. I've seen them, seen them in the zoo. Right. And they do impress me. Why do they impress you? How do they impress you? They just... Um... Just, just very human in the eyes. I, I think that would be such a meeting of minds, you'd come face to face with a mountain gorilla in its natural habitat. Both just there. Both nude amongst the foliage. <laughs> I wouldn't be nude again. What is it with you and nude? They don't like clothes. <laughs> and you are hairy all over. And I think you've got more chance of them seeing similarities. Not wandering about in, a, in a, like the woods, looking for apes, nude. Because <laughs> there's a point when that woods ends and then suddenly one creeps out and you've got me legging it. Nude. <laughs> Nude. Hello car mate, Steve here. Now, I know the gorillas you're going to see are in Uganda, but before you, you head over there, we wanted you to just explore a bit more of Africa. So we're going to start you off in South Africa because there's a, a couple of projects there we want you to, to take part in. There's a chap called Sipo, okay, he runs one of the local charities. Um, we've arranged for you to, to teach some local kids, build some huts. You've got a chance here to give something back, literally get your hands dirty. All right, mate? Just for fun. Charity. As, I mean, as, it, as I've got older, does it seem like there's more and more stuff we've got to give to? When I was a kid, all I ever saw it was like that kid wearing calipers outside a, a supermarket. It was like a, an iron model of a girl with calipers on her legs and a built-up shoe. And you, you put like 20p in it or whatever. That's what, that, was, that was being hassled for charity. Now you can't walk down the street without someone going, I need your help. <laughs> These people are sick and tired of people coming in from England with a camera crew. That's probably why they've not moved on. They probably want to build new houses and all that. They, can't, they haven't got time. The crews keep turning up. If it's not Geldof, it's that Richard Curtis bloke or Lenny Henry cropping up. They can't get anything done. Supo. Hey, Carl. How's it? Yeah, I'm all right. Good. Not too bad, not too bad. Hmm, yes. Carl, welcome to Deep Snow. Let's go for it. So we can run. All right, who's the man in the back? It's your security. I need security. Yeah. I'm Carl. How are you doing? Just a normal handshake. <laughs> How many kids will I be teaching? How many can you handle? Twelve. Twelve? Is that, are you happy with that? Not really. You see, that's the problem with charity, isn't it? It's never enough. I mean, you just drop me in here, everything's a bit of a shock to the system. But I've got a bodyguard, he's still with me, I'm in a primary school. How dangerous is this place? By sending me in to teach the local kids here, I, d I think it's more of a hindrance. I know nothing. <laughs> I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. <laughs> Why don't you talk about some of the places you've been? Yeah, but if I start going, yes, well, well, kids, um, China. They haven't got doors on the shitters. They'll go, well, we haven't. You've seen where they live in. What can I teach him? The children have chosen the topic, by the way. What is it? You're going to talk about risk. Risk? Mm -hmm. Risk in general. You can just say to them whatever you think and whatever you know about risk. Afternoon, everyone. How are you? OK, risk. Right, stop messing about the back. Right, will we shut the door, please? Because that's also very risky, leaving the door open. Thank you very much. Um, what do you... Th think 
risk is... <coughs> mm. Right. See, it's tough, this. Does anyone have any risks in the life here today? Thank you. Yep, of course you can. Um, teenagers from pregnant. Is that a risk? How, how old is she to be worrying about that? 13. I didn't worry about people having kids when I was 13. Do they honestly want to know about risk? Yes. In sex. Yes. In sex. You understand that? That's what we're talking about here. Yes. Honestly, I thought I was coming in to talk about Umpty Dumpty. <laughs> right, OK, here you go. The thing is... I haven't got kids, just so you know. I'm 30... 38 now. I haven't got any children. So, why do you not have a kid? Because of you are old. <laughs> I'm old? <laughs> <laughs> it means you don't have a wife. No, I have. I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> For 17 years. Oh, no, she's not 17. I've been with her for 17 years. <laughs> All right? Okay. Don't rush into having kids. What you should do, focus on getting a job. Meet a woman, meet a man. Have a good time for a bit, but be careful. Wear a condom. Yeah? Yes. Right, I've covered that. What else do you want to know? <laughs> you yeah. your hair, you? No, it's not cut. This isn't a style. I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> this is now. I don't say, can you just take that bit off and leave that? <laughs> do you want to play on a bike? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> this is a risk. That's risky. Never do that. <laughs> Never do it one handed. Never do that. I learned from Ricky Javier that you are good in DIY. I'm all so right. I'm looking for the guy for DIY. I'm your man. So you can do it. Geldof. He did a lot, didn't he? He, was, he got involved in all this in the 80s and he's got sick of it. He's moved on. I don't hear about him coming here anymore because you feel like, how, what can you do? What can you do? How can you sort this out? You're going to break down a house and rebuild it from scratch. Is this just water or is that... Uh... Everything that you're not thinking of. We we'll need to meet the family first. Carl. How you doing? Hello. Do that, do that. Little feather. Hello. Hello. This is where it starts. Give loads to charity. Helping old people. Deaf kids. Save the kids. If anything, I'd say I'm single-handedly causing the world's population problem. Because I'm saving everyone. I'm like Superman. <laughs> Sure, we got the right house. Quite happy helping out. I help anyone out. Someone needs a bit of help. But me turning up for one day, doing a bit of DIY, is that really going to sort this out? It's going to take forever. Look how many need to be replaced. 600,000 people live here, he said. Apparently, the rules are you're meant to build your own. But the people we're helping today are ill, so they need help to build their house. I don't know where they went. I sort of shook their hands and said, I'm going to build your house. It disappeared. <laughs> Come out for the day. He's been, he's been lying on a bed in the corner there. Just Has he? Can you imagine being ill and then someone coming out and knocking your house down? Well, hang on a minute. Just leave me, let me be. I want peace and quiet. He's got the builders in making the right racket. <laughs> the right balls up on that one. Not the greatest oh, view, is it? Yeah. It's all right, doesn't it? <laughs> Steve, it's Carl. Do you do that sort of charity work? Yeah, I got it done, I got the hook done. But there's about another 600,000 to do, so... I, d I don't quite understand what I was meant to get out of it. All you're doing is you're just helping others because that's a good and honourable thing to do. Yeah, but I do that. When I get back, I'm going to show you my bank statement. And you'll see all this stuff flying out, left, right and centre, helping all these other charities. But Carl, don't you understand that 
pound of difference between a little bit of money dribbling out of your account once a month and actually getting down there with your hands dirty. Right. When, when, was, when was the last time you were over here, Steve, getting your hands dirty? When were you, when, I, I can't remember you saying, when, when were you here again? I'm asking you because you know, you're on the ground floor. What I've done, I've built a nice new shiny hut where the old hut was. There's still a river of shit was in past it. You know what, mate? You are right. You changed my mind, Carl. All these years I've been thinking it was good to help other people. But you know what? Talking to you for two minutes on this phone, I realised, no, Carl is absolutely bloody right. I've cancelled all of my standing orders. Forget it. No, I'm not saying that. What have I been saying? I'm just telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. What more can I do? I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just a bit of frustration. And I just feel that just because I build one hut, it's not enough. Here's something. Do you know I had an argument with him once over 50 pence? If we're talking about Steve and money, 50 pence. <laughs> I got some coffees, walked over, he said, where's my change? I said, oh, it's in my pocket. Oh, that's mine. And we had a big, honestly, not messing about, a big full-on blown argument over 50 pence. <laughs> That's the reality, but he won't let that in. He'll go cut that out. 50 pence! <laughs> uh... I got a text from Steve this morning just saying that he wants me to meet up with Seco again, and that charity bloke, to uh, take part in some local activity. I don't know what it is. That's, that's all he said. Welcome to Soweto Schooling Towers. Very iconic. And you look at the middle of the bungee jumping. It's a bungee. Wow. What, what's, what's, the, what's the thinking? We've done this. We've done it. We went all the way to New Zealand, didn't do it. Oh, Jesus. That's... What up? I'm not doing it. Let's go and have a look, mate. There's a really lovely view of Soweto up there, and... I know your game. Just go up there and have a look, see the township. Oh, there you are. Push. Back <laughs> to the edge. No! Nobody will push you. <laughs> this is crazy. How's it going? Um, I'm, I'm a bit pissed off because I'm on the edge of a bungee again. Yeah. I think you'll feel really good about yourself if you have one more chance and you do it this time. Is he going to jump? Oh, God almighty. It's pointless. It's pointless. I don't want to do it. If people want to do it, then great, but there's no reason for me to do this. There's no big payoff. Oh, what if I gave you a reason? OK, if you jump, I'll buy a hut for someone. How much are you? The 500 quid. Do you know what? I'd rather I'd rather pay the 500 quid out of my own money than to do this job. I'll raise you. I'll buy two hats. You're right, twat, eh? <laughs> no, I'm not. You are, because I don't want to do it. I'll pay that. I'll pay that. This is my last offer, OK? I'll buy five huts. <laughs> if you jump, you've bought five huts, basically, and you feel good about yourself, and you've made me look a twat. Think about it. Think about it. So you're going to do it, right? Look at you. Hmm? I'm going to do it, aren't you? I'm going to do it. <laughs> All the work yesterday, that going out the window. I built a hut yesterday. You should be over the moon about that. It's good, man. It's not so bad. As you can see my face, I'm happy, man. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, uh. Wow. That looks what happen? Forget it. Forget yeah, it. Let's do it like that. What do you mean you don't have to do it like that? As if I would be. <laughs> it's a definite no, honestly. It's not for me. Let's leave it as that. If I tell Ricky I didn't do it, are they going to keep doing this? Are they going to set something up again whilst I'm here? I'm just thinking, give him a call. Say, yeah, I did it. All right. All right, how's it going? How was it? Mental. Did you do it? You yeah. jumped? Yeah. Well, I had yeah. to, didn't I? So, uh, yeah. Well done. Were you, were you scared, though? 
No, no, not really. I just, you know, it was on <laughs> things that just oh, focused. Dude. I just thought, I've got to do it. Let's get on with it. I just was like, right, is it? He should at least try to sell it. Like, oh my God, it was terrifying. I'll never do it again. <laughs> well, then I'm doing this. Bang, done, bosh. Get these five huts. Let's get these people happy here. Do we're over the moon. Oh, well done. Tell Steve, yeah? Just let him know, because he was having a go at me yesterday and all that. I'm sick of it. So just say, Carl yeah. did it. He's raised the money. We've got the five huts. Everyone's happy. I would, I would ask Steve to... I said that. OK. If you did it, um, I've arranged a caravan for a little treat, because I know how much you like them. Um, so not only have they got their huts, and you feel brilliant, but um, you can uh, stay in a caravan now. That's all right. I'm happy with that. No, I know it's not right to do that, but he's shut him up now, hasn't it? That's the end of it. I've done a bungee, as far as he's concerned. Ricky's happy. Kids have got the huts. I'm happy. I've got my caravan. So he's a, he's a nice lie, isn't he? He's not an evil one. I don't know if I can go where I want to go, can't I? Stay where I want to stay. So I'm thinking of stopping off at a place where uh, a couple have got a hippo as a pet. Carl, Tony, Carl, please meet you. Tony, please meet you. Don't hippos smell like shit? They stink. I don't know. All I know is that when I went to the zoo and there was a hippo area, I always avoided it because it smelled like straight doo doo. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? I saw it on the internet. There's loads of clips. Just wandering about the front room, it's mental. Quite fancy getting a pet, but it's just that thing of airs going everywhere. I suppose that's a good thing with a hippo, you don't get airs on the sofa. <laughs> it's bloody massive, isn't she, when she comes out of the water? Oh my god, it's laying its own. That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. Fucking hippo in here. <sighs> he can't get through there, can it? No. No. Nope. Would you like to feed her beans? Mm-mm. You don't have to throw it in. She's calm, she's relaxed. There you go. Wonderful. That was excellent. Oh, what a lovely little baby. It's not little. <laughs> no. Donkey Jess. Thank you, Jessica. Donkey Jess. Donkey Jess. One more. Oh, I'll keep missing. I'm making a right mess of your kitchen. Oh, you got a hippo in it. <laughs> Suzanne from the back. Can't use that. Do you have insurance? So if it knock your plasma over, are you covered? No. It's like some sort of mad dream or a cartoon. When you think about what I've been put through, and this is the maddest thing I've seen in 38 years. <laughs> Every night, she has a aromatherapy body massage. What? What it makes me realise is, is that I'm quite lucky with Suzanne. She asked for a cat, she's asked for a dog. I'm sorry, like, that seems cool and all, but it's kind of pissing me off. How are you going to have all those kids and those families living in worse situation than that fucking hippo? Doesn't seem fair. I guess nothing in life is fair, but Jesus Christ, that fucking hippo gets a fucking massage every night? No. I've got no, we haven't got the space. Sure, there's got a hippo. And I love animals, seriously, I love animals. I'm total Dr. Doolittle at heart, but... <clears throat> Some things I'm just not with. <laughs> Cute hippo, but Wow. Yes, I'll fight on a Sunday morning. Jesus Christ. You can't be lying in bed all the time, right? There's charity stuff that needs sorting out. <laughs> Sipo's been calling me, the guy, you know, who does the charity stuff, raising money for the huts. Have you paid it yet? Hello? Oh, what do you want? Well, I'm just calling up, just letting you know I'm having a good time. 
Just uh, just had a little shower, had some breakfast, sat here with a hippo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, honestly. I'd say if you're seeing animals, this is the best way to see it. In someone's house, have a cup of tea if you want it. Biscuits on, on the go. It's just sat here now. It's well happy. Is it happy though? What do you mean? Of course it's happy. It doesn't just live in a house though, does it? No, it wanders off, wanders in, watches a bit of telly. Wild animals should be in the wild, Carl. Whatever. I mean, don't be worrying. I'm off to see the gorillas. I'm not going to bring one home. <laughs> see, Pog again. Hiya, Carl. The money still hasn't transferred into our account. Give it a chance. Ricky tells me you're up near Jessica the Hippo and there's a township that could do with your help there. They also need more huts. Let me know. Ricky's just taking the piss. He can't even be asked to wind me up anymore. He's getting someone else to do it. Is that what it's going to be like for the rest of the trip? We're in the shit here. Who can we call? We've got Carl's number. Have you? Get to him. Honestly, I feel like the fourth emergency service. Hello? All right, it's Carl. How's it going, mate? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm a lot happier now with this uh, caravan. What's the glory days when you used to holiday in Wales? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty close. This is the happiest I've been on the, doing this bucket list. I'm telling you this, mate, honestly, I have not heard you this trip or this trip possibly forever. So, uh, what you got out for me to do? We thought maybe it'd be nice for you to go and visit the Enderbelly Tribe. Enderbelly Tribe? They're going to teach you their painting techniques, all right? And in exchange, you get the privilege of cooking a meal for the king. The king? Oh, right, you're actually going to be cooking for royalty. I've never met a king before. What do I cook him? I don't know, mate. Whatever you think would express Carl Pilkington. <laughs> it's the first dinner party I've ever done this. Things. So just keep it simple, cheese. I'm going to cook him something that I'd eat at home. I don't want to try and be fancy. Oh, look at these. Why not? It's the royalty. Going. should Bloody be hell. fancy. Cooking for a king tonight. He'd eat beans. Uh, where's the steak? Oh, yeah, another tribe. Meat? Uh, if it's a king and he lives in like amongst lions and shit, he probably wants a big ass fat piece of steak and like some potatoes on the side and some greens. You know, some comforting, f fulfilling. This guy got him baked beans, which no hate on that, but come on. For royalty? Fine. They're not that different. I mean, you know, the clobber that they wear and all that, sometimes you kind of go, what are you playing at? But, take that away. They're just people, aren't they? And most people like beans. <laughs> yeah, I like beans too, but... I like all this. This is good. Mm. Very nice. Very nice, that. Colourful. We can paint your caravan. Um. I'm not allowed to paint the caravan, though, am I? It's a hired, it's not my caravan. It comes yeah. off with water. Really? You can wash it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, if it comes off, just because, like I say, it's not mine. But, you know, that'd be good, then. All right, yeah, let's do that. But, do you need help getting up when you've got these on? Because I imagine it's difficult getting up. <laughs> it's like having guttering on your legs. You sure you're all right? Right, okay. Just one side, maybe. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Let's, you know, let's not go mad. That's so cute. So what? I don't understand this paint. No, that's not a paint. That looks like poo poo. Countdown. Countdown. Cow. Cow dung. Yeah. What are you using? Cow shit. Yes. No, I'm not seeing cow shit. That's lovely paint. You come over here with a bucket of shit to put my caravan here. That looks nothing like the art over there. There's nothing <laughs> like it. This is like a dirty protest. <laughs> yeah. Police. Your mum's been at it again. Shit all over number 18. <laughs> well, you must also do that. You must dip in your hand there. Yeah, it stinks when you wake it up like that. <laughs> Keeps hitting me. Don't sniff oh, right. it! 
Is that okay? Yes, it's nice. Oh, it's nice. All the toilets I've been in since I've been here have looked like this. So I realise now it's art. Got some here, well. It's flicked off. I want to be cooking for a king. Got my hands in a load of shit here. Brilliant. Luke, can I go and wash my hands? <laughs> what is that? That's the king. I'm sorry, that doesn't look like a meal, it looks like a snack. Hello? I'm Carl. Yes. Yeah? Good one. Good one. Look at him! I'm just preparing. He looks wonderful with all, like, he looks decked out. He brought his finest clothing and, and you know, and he's going to give him s some snacks. Come on, Carl. <laughs> Food for you. Yes. How many people um, are you eating with tonight? These people. And he oh, these his, are eating as well. Yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you go and do what you got to do. He's wearing a full cheetah on his back. I should give him fucking kitty cat, not beans. What's this on the floor? Nibbles to start. Shortbread biscuits. I don't know if they've tried them. It's a new thing for them. Ooh, Wiggly worms, some crisps. Ooh, uh, in case they're sort of fitness freaks, apples. I don't think they're fitness freaks, more as warriors. <laughs> Crisp, biscuit, fruit, wiggly worm, quite sour. Oh, fucking hell. Toast. Toast. Why is he freaking Beans. out? Toast. Well, can't you just help us here? You can see I'm struggling here. I can't do this. I can't do it, Luke. Fucking hell. Oh, I just kicked a load of shit on that. <coughs> Sorry about the delay. Meat. Meat? Yeah. I the just... man is always, if we eat, we eat with the meat. Uh, this isn't it. There is also a pudding. Carl, oh, they want to know what it's called. Cheese on toast with beans. Geldof said he fed the world. It's a fucking nightmare, it is. <sighs> pudding. Pudding, yeah. Chocolate uh, sponge. Custard. Thank you. Quite warm. <sighs> God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Yeah? I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. They don't want it anymore. He's moved on to a plate of meat. Some woman's come out. She's had more time now, hasn't she? Hers looks fucking brilliant compared to that shit. Sorry, mate. Look, I've sorted out for you to join a major animal conservation project. They're going to be relocating wild rhinos. Uh, the range is called Lee, and they'll train you up. Give you a real wild animal to do it. All right, see you later. I don't get him at times. How many animals do I need to see? And I've still got to face the gorilla. What's that there? What's What animal is this? That's the dung of a blue wildebeest. It's uh, Well, you, could, you don't have to pick it up. I just... Pretty old dropping. <clears throat> yeah, quite old. Are you joking? Are they olives? What are you doing, licking it? Just taste testing it. It's a way to determine the age of the dropping. We'll talk about that later. Oh! <laughs> What I'm doing is I'm determining the freshness of the dropping. And it can be determined just by, by the taste of it. But is that a last resort? That's, I mean, sure that you keep driving little tester. It. You don't want to follow the wrong set of footprints, do you? So how often a week are you licking shit? Yeah. 
With me. Taste it. Jesus fucking Christ, this man is disgusting. I know, look, let's prop to what he's doing. He's doing work. Uh, he's a good man, he's a good human being. But uh, <laughs> I feel sorry for the person he's married to or whoever he's with. Oh my God. I hurt you. Get your finger in there, but and then you can kind of get a bit of a, a taste of it, you know? Things to do before you die. Stick a finger in a lot of shit. Got some? You taste it, it's a little bit sweet, and then we'll find some later on that's even fresher and oh, won't be so like sweet. wine tasting. Kind of, I suppose, the same kind of principle. Get it. Do you know you bet with Matthew Kelly? Do you get that over here? No. It's a programme on the telly. Say if there was piles of shit mm -hmm. and I blindfolded you and went, what's that? <laughs> well, you, could you tell just by that what animal it is? <laughs> give it a go. It's not a skill to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to head into the area where the rhinoceros has been located. Why have we got a shift there? Well, this particular rhinoceros bull is holding a territory which is full of young females that are actually, many of them are his daughters. They're the weirdest looking thing on the planet, aren't they? I mean, there's some people who think God created oh, stuff like that. Well, look at it. Would he really? Would he really design something as gormless looking as that? And don't look at me. We've given the rhino the injection, stressing its head on the tree, messing about with it a bit. And then they walk it over to a truck. Get it on the back of the truck. Oh, fuck. Get out of this trine. Because apparently I've sort of had it away with its own daughter, which isn't good. Kind of get div rhinos running around. Take it to another sort of group of rhinos. It can have it away with them. That's it, innit, really? I don't want to get this close to a gorilla unless this fella's here. Sticking an injection up its arse. I mean, we could do that, couldn't we? <laughs> Knock it out, have me sat with it. Right, can lag it. <laughs> biggest thing, second biggest thing on the planet. Yeah, there's a fact for you if you want it to look good. What's the biggest thing? Elephant, isn't it? Second, that's a. S it is! Don't, why do you question everything? I, was, I know some facts. I think you've been whale watching on this series. Yeah. A text from Suzanne. I just was saying, oh, how's it going? She's still oh, stressful. I'm moving office. I was moving a fucking rhino. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl. Um, now you're in Uganda. There is a market where they sell a lot of second-hand clothes that have been donated by charities. So, uh, meet your guy, this guy called Bam, and he'll be by a white van at the entrance. Look at it. Look at it. Thought it might be quite a nice gesture if you buy up some clothes that you could take with you on the trek to see the gorillas. Bye, mate. Bye. Do you know a fellow called Bam? What? Bam. A man called Bam in a, what, in a van. Bam. You Bam? Hi, Carl. So, you're welcome to Uganda. Um, yes. All right. Are you deep in the forest? You need something like a jacket, a heavy jacket. Heavy jacket. Yeah, and uh, khaki or cordros. That's what that's we're going to get. I mean, is that a priority when I'm going to see a gorilla? What pants am I going to wear? I'm going to need a pair of cords. Ricky will to do it naked. There's no way I'm going naked. Gorilla's in the mist. <laughs> she had clothes on. David Attenborough, when he was rolling about with him, having a wrestle. Didn't have his knob out. So I'm not doing that. So if that's if it's if it's wear the cords or not, I'll wear the cords. I don't even know why you're filming me shopping. Honestly, I sometimes think you're making a different program to me. Let's buy these. That's um seven thousand. Seven thousand. Uh, how much is that in pounds? One pound sixty, mate. One pound sixty. Oh, into honestly, it. That's brilliant. Right top here. Now I've always got a problem with the boiler. <laughs> Good, <isn't> it? <laughs> oh, just ten more oh. minutes, just to have a look around. <laughs> yeah, they're good then. You like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. How about if I just do a swap? Let's go. 
Got to go, mate. Hey, look, they've got a pool table. Oh, this isn't really what we, we had in mind. To be honest, I didn't have in mind shopping about buying cords. Rules have changed. <laughs> Join in. Maganda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This does you are welcome, you are welcome to our country, Uganda. Hey. Alright boys. Hope we didn't spend too long in the market. Um probably should have told you you got a twelve hour drive to get to the uh, uh but I mean it's easier than just sitting in the van, chilling out. Hard to work, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish you all the best luck to stay on this Gorilla Forest camp. Have you thought about what you're going to say? To? To the viewers when you're out there with the gorillas? I don't know. Just see how it goes. Why are you worrying about that? No one's going to be expecting a great speech from me anyway, are they? Everything's been said that can be said about a gorilla. Then why are we doing it? It's supposed to see one. How long's this trek? Three hours. You are kidding me. We're walking another three hours. Oh, mate. I'm just hoping it's, you know. I don't mind walking and like walking, but through all that mud and stuff. No. Doesn't seem. And it's humid and all those mosquitoes. Ugh. It's worth it. Call Ramesh closer here. I've just smelled the way it is. You can smell a gorilla's nest? Yes, we can. And make sure that he leaves the poop so that no one will use it anymore. Do you need to um, taste it to see how near they are? No, you don't. If you see it's fresh, <laughs> no, you don't. the leaves are wet. Why are you jumping straight into <laughs> stick your finger in it? <laughs> we are getting close to the gorilla. <laughs> Not though, you've been saying that, we've been going for hours. <laughs> We've got to walk the same route back. Five minutes. Five minutes. How long now, Dave? Seven minutes. He said seven minutes. Less than ten minutes, the gorillas. Uh-huh. We are getting much closer to them. Is this how you imagine? <laughs> no. No, I didn't. I didn't, I've not... Oh, fucking hell. Oh. Oh, you twat. <laughs> don't talk to me. Honestly. Don't. <laughs> Guys, I've a fucking trepid got hold of me. <laughs> Dear me, I did. My feet are hurting. My toes are being crushed with these boots. My socks are wet. Oh, great. Got a headache coming on. Uh, they have started moving towards where we passed. No, are you saying the gorillas are going back to where we started? Yes. <laughs> oh, so I, oh I just want to choke her. Stayed with them, didn't it? She couldn't be arsed. She did the trek. It's a bollocks are going back. It's easy to live with them. This is an indication that we are much close More to the poop. gorillas. It's the poop. gorilla poop. I've Sorry. seen it. This one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. I may say 10 out of 10. Not like ET. <laughs> it's a big one, isn't it? Shall we start with our smaller one? It's bloody massive. But how many gorillas are there in the world? We have got 720 mountain gorillas living in the whole world. 700. That's nothing like. You could put the world's gorillas on one flight. They take up more than one seat, though. Okay. <laughs> you can get a, if they had standing. If it wasn't taking off, and and there was no sort of rules, you could put some in business class and all the rest of it. <laughs> you could get them all on it. <laughs> 
which made Business me realise that that is a bit of a problem. Not that that is a problem. I'm... <laughs> Look at her nose. David should have sit down. Well, it was the. Although it looks lovely, I will be terrified to do that. Um, they can rip your face off with just a hand. <laughs> no. This thing today, wasn't it? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you see one? Yeah, saw saw a family of them. <laughs> Bit of communication. <laughs> Well, no, not really. <laughs> I've got mozzie bites on my head. Ten hours it was in total to get there and back. Really? Walking. Wow. In mud, socks wet, covered in shit. I got <laughs> there, they wanted me to sort of give some quote as to what I was feeling like. Couldn't think of anything. That little ears. Long arms. Short legs. This is your speech. Wow. You, you, you are just like Attenborough. That is just like Attenborough. Yeah, but he's, he, I think it's all to do with the accent. If Attenborough said that, if he went, I mean, they've got little ears, people go, oh, that's good. I think it's because I, I'm northern, yeah. people go, he sounds like a right dickhead. It's not easy, is it? It's that here, metal's up my arse. Trying to think of something worthy to say. I just think, at the end of the day, I'll tell you what, don't say anything. Sometimes you can say it best when you don't say anything at all. Ronan Keaton said that. Let's, let's, let, yeah, there you go. Let's take the words of Ronan Keaton here. I say it best when I say nothing at all. Oh, I'll put my hands down because there's shit everywhere. I mean, you know, I know that the trip was all about the gorillas, but I reckon I've made a lot of difference in Africa. You sorted that thing out for me to build a hut. I've done that for them. Yeah. I taught kids. Yeah. I cooked for the king and his mates. I shifted that rhino. Yeah. That's another charity act. You finally did the bungee jump, which is pretty amazing, considering no, how adamant you were at the beginning, you would never do it. But that's what, then, that's what, what mm, that's what <laughs> I was going to say, though. Because I've been doing a lot of charity work, I just want to finish this trip by uh, sort of completing it. And I'll pay the two and a half grand when I get back. And then that way, it's all part no, of... No, no, no. No, I don't mind. That's what I'm going to do. No, I want to, honestly. I want to. No, no, that, no, you did it. No, I pay it. You did the jump. He didn't. You did the jump. I didn't do it. I didn't do the <laughs> jump. I didn't do the jump. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do the jump. <laughs> What, the bungee jump? Mm. But what, when, how were you going to get away with it? Because <laughs> I'd have seen the footage of you not jumping. <laughs> no, but I got, the di I got Luke, the director, to put me out on. And do the <laughs> jump, but his hat came off, so you can see that he's not bald. So he didn't work. Well, we can split the two and a half grand then. No, 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 you're paying it. For you're real. That's hilarious. So now, not only are you made a complete twonk of yourself, <laughs> showing that you're a coward and a liar, you're two and a half grand now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, you won't be forever. Yeah, you're joining us all the drillers. I'm not going to get it back, and it's Luke in a fucking fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on An Idiot Abroad. Route 66 I've heard of. Two and a half thousand miles. Cow without a roof on it. Right. Driving along. Yeah. Fucking hell! Forget it. <laughs> you no, know, Carl, you, you could do this solo. Hang on, does that mean singing on me own? <laughs> oh, go, Ralph! Do you know what I do, Carl? I drive down Route 66. Alright then. 
What are we doing? Get the dancers in! No, Uncle. No, no, wait, wait. Man, th this one was some. I don't know. This one I found really, really funny. Uh, he was like all over the place, and he's such a nervous energy. But uh, the constant poop. Oh my god, that just was horrible. It, no, I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> but I hope you guys. It, I hope you guys liked. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, a comment. I'll see you on the next one.